I am often asked, how do you create illuminance diagrams in Revit? Actually, nobody ever asked me that, but I'm, because I'm requiring you to do it, I probably should show you how to do it. Um, and if you don't have uh, Lumion or Enscape, or you can't run them on your computer, or you don't feel like it, you can use the onboard Revit rendering system. Uh, which is under the View tab here, and uh, if you haven't used it before or don't remember, um, this makes use of lights that are inside Revit. Now these lights inside Revit are notoriously difficult to aim, so uh, especially if you're using Lumion, those uh, light uh, components in Lumion are actually much easier to use. And I would recommend that. But um, anyway, uh, Lumion doesn't do lighting calculations. Enscape does, and Enscape uses Revit's lights. Again, those notoriously difficult to aim, aim lights. Uh, and if you've used studio lights in your project, which I pretty much always do uh, if I'm rendering in Revit, uh, then you're, you're not rendering realistic lighting. So uh, for this to work, you need to have light fixtures in your project, and they have to use real Revit virtual light sources. Um, you can also use IES files uh, inside the Revit lighting system. So first of all, what the heck is an IES file anyway? Um, and let me show you the difference here. Here's a just a component that I loaded off of Revit City or some horrible place. Uh, and note uh, that, of course, this only applies to when you're lighting inside Revit. Uh, if you're using, uh, or with Enscape, if you're using Lumion, um, you'll, you'll have your own separate set of procedures to deal with. But anyway, on this light fixture, I'll select it and uh, choose Edit Type to show me all the fun information about this uh, device. And uh, if you scroll down in the list, and again, this may not be news to you, you'll see that, oh, there's some controls for lighting, including the color temperature and all that kind of stuff, and the intensity, how much light output is coming from the light source. Uh, and you just enter these numerically. Well, um, if you have a different kind of light fixture, and I, I think I downloaded these uh, down lights uh, from who knows where, or maybe I made them, I can't remember. But now if I edit type, let's just stretch this out a little bit and we go down to the very bottom, what you'll see is instead it uses what's called a photometric web file. Uh, and these are uh, standard file formats that are a three-dimensional representation of the light output. You can imagine these look like cones or something like that. So here it is, it's an IES file. Well, how do you get an IES file anyway? Uh, and what you need to do, these are real measured uh, light outputs from different fixtures or just lamps. And uh, so you need to go and find a manufacturer that has these. And I happen to really like the ERCO website. Uh, it has some very snazzy graphics um, and uh, they're very high precision, very expensive German light fixtures, uh, and also they have IES files. And most manufacturers, well, I shouldn't say that, many manufacturers provide IES files, typically the higher end fixtures, not the kind of contractor grade. Uh, and let's uh, scroll down here in the list. You can, you can read all the exciting information about this kind of fixture. What I like about the ERCO website, uh, obviously they classify the fixtures based on kind of their most typical usage. Um, they have a very nice galleries. Um, they also uh, have some pretty good diagrams of how these things actually work, you know, their dimensions. But then the best part is these kind of design guides um, really give you a sense. Most uh, light fixtures, particularly track fixtures because of glare issues, um, most track fixtures come with kind of a vast array of beam spreads and lenses and uh, baffles, the various ways that they can keep from uh, having those things shine in your eyes. Anyway, the, the catalog is kind of like incredibly precise. And if you, if you keep scrolling down here, and again, uh, all the choices which are available, I just love that they have these fancy, easy to read graphics. But anyway, let's just uh, pick one of these fixtures. Down here at the bottom, they have data. Uh, often the manufacturers will have their a separate site or a separate location for things like downloads. Um, and uh, for uh, ERCO, you basically choose which one you want here. Let's, let's choose that lovely black housing. Um, you should be able to uh, come down and 
uh, I mean, uh, click through and uh, jump to their sort of uh, greater data. You see really terrific information here. Again, IES uh, or light uh, spread information based on angle, numerical data of the candela power. Um, and then if you scroll way down, uh, you should see that um, there's uh, all sorts of stuff here. There are many programs out there that uh, are very sophisticated with lighting. Um, uh, Relux and Dialux uh, are two really big players. So the, uh, in Europe anyway, and these guys, uh, you can see, you can just download the data right in there. Um, but the IES data is uh, what we want. You can probably just download it directly. Um, I believe you can get uh, DWG, maybe D, uh, 3DS data. Um, and so, uh, most of these will work in our 3D model programs. Unfortunately, at least last time I tried, ERCO files, if you download the uh, DXF or 3DS data, it's just the housing. It doesn't have the IES file embedded in it. So that's why you have to get both. And then in Revit, if you're using Revit lighting, uh, you have to insert that IES file into the housing. Um, you have to kind of assign it to the component. But anyway, for the most part, for us, our calculations are not quite so precise. Um, and if we did want precise calculations, we'd use a different program. So Revit's fine to just get um, the simple light distribution uh, data. Okay, so once you've got uh, all your lighting placed in your project, you just click the Render button. Um, and what I strongly recommend is you render locally first. So when you're doing illuminance calculations, you really need to find out if all those lights are working. Uh, and I think if you've taken, uh, if you've had the distinct displeasure of listening to all of my recorded videos for electronic media, you'll, you'll find that I, I strongly recommend a local render first. A render on your computer at whatever the lowest resolution is going to be. Uh, draft setting. Uh, you could even render a region if you're testing the lighting. But the biggest thing is remember to set it to artificial only. We are testing interior lighting here, so we don't want the windows and the, the power of the sun is very strong. So do that uh, test render first. I'll just click render and it's going to take some time. It's kind of fast forwarded there. Uh, and you can see it's a little dark. Um, I mean, I actually don't really care about the quality of the rendering, um, but here, let's brighten it up just a little bit, and uh, I can even desaturate it, which is actually kind of nice for studying the lighting. Um, so, whoa, come back. Um, so you can see here that, whoops, uh, here you go, the uh, rendering is back. Um, you can see that uh, I'm getting distinct pools of light in, in various places and spotlights. Uh, you know, the lighting is all working as intended in this particular scene. So to uh, once the uh, local test is done, now you want to do a higher quality setting. So uh, instead of clicking the render button, you now have the cloud rendering button. You see here there's two, render cloud, and then render gallery is where you go where when you're ready to look at your renders. So I'll choose render in cloud. Uh, I obviously don't necessarily need to see the uh, steps here, but um, if you find that uh, helpful, obviously leave them up. I'm going to not show those. And uh, there are uh, a couple of settings here. Uh, one thing I happen to like about this online rendering system is you can render a whole bunch. You can kind of batch render your drawings. Now, interesting enough, we can uh, choose illuminance here, and it has some options of uh, the location, and we can use the location and time of day from the model. Um, but uh, actually, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather uh, just stick with our uh, still image here. And uh, with the still image, you don't need, you can render quality standard is fine and medium is fine. Um, but the exposure is what's important. Advanced basically opens your model in 3ds Max, which is a super powerful rendering program. Uh, and that does all sorts of balancing for you and exposure control. Um, to make the rendering look nice. Uh, we don't want that. I mean, we do want our renderings to look nice, but in this case, we want to use native exposure. And what that will do is use the local lighting settings, the lighting settings in your model. And this is especially important if you're doing scenes um, where you're turning on and off lighting to either see if the lighting is working, which is a very common thing, 
Uh, or if you're doing what we're doing, which is trying to calculate light levels, we don't want it to adjust the lighting in any way, uh, shape, or form. And I'm not actually entirely sure with Illumins if it will do that. But anyway, this is, this is the best way to do it. So you just click Start Rendering, and uh, there you go. And you'll see a little timer kind of spinning up at the top. And if you're super impatient, you can, you can go to the render gallery here. And uh, this, is, this is where it takes you. This is the, you know, the online uh, rendering system here. Uh, again, you can do very nice renderings right uh, within Revit. You just have the displeasure of trying to figure out how to make those darn renderings, uh, how to make the lighting work in Revit, which is no small task. So anyway, let me go and I'm gonna view my project. And obviously I have quite a few different projects here. Um, and uh, this view, I have rendered it in a number of different ways. So this is like the standard rendering here. And you can see each of these is, is kind of an attempt when I want to render it. Um, and, and up here, there are a number of options here. There's uh, what we saw in the menu before, the panorama. This one is a stereo panorama, which is totally cool. You can put that in your Google, um, Google goggles, Google Glass. Uh, and um, uh, solar study, which allows you to obviously so, uh, study the sun. But uh, the one that we're most interested in, in is illuminance. So if we check that, uh, it brings up a menu, uh, which allows us to choose any number of features. You now, uh, some of these, uh, it, it will use the time and date from the view, which I guess I guess we're stuck with. And the sky model, unfortunately, I, I've never figured out a way to like totally turn it off, but you can certainly choose overcast sky. Um, I suppose you could come in here and make the time of day, the middle of the night, uh, which would um, essentially turn the sky off. I think that does that. Uh, I don't think I actually have any windows in this space, so there you go, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, you can choose foot candles, although if you want to go like the entire rest of the world and go metric, uh, Lux would, would probably be better. Um, and use an automatic scale, because what that will do is it may be the brightest spot, uh, illuminance level in your room is, is 40 foot candles. Uh, this will adjust the scale so that, you know, it's not kind of tiny. Uh, finally, you can make the image size really big. I don't actually remember what the biggest size that you're allowed is, but but 4,000 um, is probably uh, pretty good. Uh, for our purposes, um, oh, more the more pixels, the better. So I, I guess there's some standard sizes here too. Um, but let, let's go with uh, the bigger, the better. Uh, and click render, and there you go. Now, I'm uh, actually not going to do that because I have it already made here. It will take whatever it said, 10 or 15 minutes. And you can see here, uh, I've got a scale on the right that is um, maxes out at 48.1 foot candles. Those are, the, those are the hot spots, right? And uh, depending on where your lighting is uh, and how it's configured. Now, this in this case, the hot spots are visible light sources in the recessed lights in front of the uh, countertop. Um, so obviously, those are going to be the brightest spots in the room. And, and clearly, a lot of the room is pretty dark. Um, but what this does is it actually allows you to assign numbers to it. Unfortunately, you can't kind of like click on any one spot and get an exact reading. Um, that would be totally cool, but you know, such is life. Um, and uh, to do that, you'd absolutely need more sophisticated software. So anyway, once you've uh, got this guy rendered the way you want it, and, and by the way, uh, anytime you render, you can, you can turn this on, turn this feature on when you use this render cloud. Uh, and it's only as good as the lighting that you have in it. So you can see the light over the table here. I may, ha may have adjusted it to look good in the rendering. And sometimes, as you may have found, the fixtures that you get on Revit City uh, or other places, you have to turn the lighting way up, like 100,000 lumens or something like that. Um, so obviously it's not totally realistic. To make it totally realistic, you would have to use IES files throughout. So again, we're just ballparking here. We're just trying to get a sense of how well this is working. Anyway, download your image and post it and you will have completed your homework.